Skittles. <laughs> One more candy for you. Did you guys throw out candy? Okay, let me, uh, let me turn off. Uh, let me turn off uh, uh, my microphone. Right. So uh, yeah. Hey, little guys. How are you? What's that? No, you saw that I didn't. I didn't do the demo. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, no, that, that's the demo at the end of the lecture that I didn't have time to do. I'll do it. Uh, it would have been hard to do with webbed hands anyway. So, uh, and it's too many. It's too many demos. But uh, yeah. Anyway, the Luke thing. Right. Yeah. Would Vader be able to see Luke? Yeah, and he would see time going faster. So he'd see Luke like aging crazily. Yeah, exactly. That's okay. right. It's a it's That's a symmetric. Well, they see they see what you'd expect. If one of them sees the other one aging slowly, the other one sees it aging quickly. Okay. It's unlike the case in special relativity where each one sees the other one going by and thinks that their clocks are going slowly. Okay. There it's a completely symmetric situation because you can't tell which one is moving. In the case of a gravitational field. Um, uh, it, it's different. It's an acceleration, and you can tell that you're in the gravitational field, and so the symmetry is broken, basically. Okay. okay cool. All right. Cool. Thank you so yeah. Much. You're welcome. Hey, hi, Alex. Hi. Can I just get you the a photo. Yeah. Okay. Oh no, no. This is a video. Oh, a video. Yeah. Okay, can you just get cool. the alien to talk again? Oh, oh, the alien to talk. Yeah. Right, okay. Here we go. This is on YouTube. You want a video too? <laughs> Could you hear it from back there? It's yeah. 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 I just need to find the magic spot. Come on. <laughs> okay. Can you say hi to YouTube? <laughs> hey, how's it going? All right, Here's cool. an alien being spaghettified. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, thanks Alex. <laughs> Alright. Yeah. And um and I'm just kind of doing this. Quantum mechanically it's allowed, okay? And so that's, that's what happens. And but it turns out, just a minute, nothing, not, not back there yet. I, I, have, I have little black holes in the back, but I'm not, I'm not mentioning it yet. So it turns out this process accelerates the smaller the mass of the black hole. So as I lose mass, I start to be <laughs> And, and you know, afterwards, you can come and get the kind of candy. Now, the first time. Oh, oh thank you so much, Lauren. Okay. In case you missed it the first time, I have another one here. <laughs> and again, this process, all right, it, it, it's negligible for a stellar mass black hole and even more negligible for a supermassive black hole, but but if there are little tiny black holes that form after the Big Bang, as Hawking thinks might have happened, they may well be evaporated. And as they evaporate more and more, okay, the process accelerates, and they explode in a burst of gamma rays. <laughs> so we might expect to see these bursts of gamma rays coming from the sky somewhere that are the explosions of black holes. And Oh look, I have detected in the back of the room there some little tiny mini black holes left over from the birth of the universe. Are they evaporating? Have they already evaporated? I think one black hole's name is Capri and the other one's name is Orion. Oh, all right guys. Well, those are little tiny evaporating black holes. And, uh, so, so, um, for a stellar mass black hole or a supermassive black hole, we think that the process is negligible. But if there really are little tiny black holes that formed after the birth of the universe, then it could be that they are evaporating right now and exploding. And all the ones that, are, that were originally less massive than about the mass of a mountain, like Mount Everest, will have already evaporated. And those that are about the mass of the mountain would be the ones that are in their last stages of evaporation and might be producing bursts of gamma rays. Now, the thing I want to close with is that there have been bursts of gamma rays detected in the sky. Unfortunately for Hawking, they are not thought to be explosions of many black holes. Let me give you the historical, uh, the, the history of these things. In the 1960s, there were the Vela satellites 
that were sent up by the U.S. in order to monitor whether the Soviets were violating the partial nuclear test ban treaty. Okay? And they found no clear violations of the treaty, but what they did find was that occasionally, somewhere in the sky, there was this burst of gamma rays. Very interesting, actually. Okay? And now we have satellites that routinely find these things, and there's one called the SWIFT satellite that not only detects them, but then sort of slews over and points in the right direction with other telescopes like X-ray and optical and ultraviolet telescopes that can record the X-ray, optical, and ultraviolet glow associated with the gamma ray burst. And each of these things looks different. Here's sort of the, the number of photons you're getting on the vertical axis as a function of time. And you see they're irregular and spiky. And there's a saying, when you've seen one gamma ray burst, you've seen one gamma ray burst. Okay? <laughs> Not when you've seen one, you've seen them all. And going back to the quote that I had the other day, you know, Clinton mentioned gamma ray bursts in his address, uh, his science and technology policy address in January of 2000. So the question is, what are they if they're not explosions of mini black holes? And we know that they're not explosions of mini black holes because their, their various observational properties just don't agree with the theoretical expectation of this process. Well, it turns out that we know that they are generally in very distant galaxies. We know that because we can see where gamma ray bursts occur, and they occur in these fuzzy little things whose spectra are, uh, are indicative of, of very distant galaxies. I'll tell you how we know that in, in a week or so. Um, we also know that sometimes they are associated with supernovae, actual explosions of stars that are visible at optical wavelengths, and they can be as powerful as or more powerful than supernovae. So we think what's actually going on is that in some special cases, you have a very massive rotating star whose core collapses and along the rotational axis, energized particles can escape. They don't, they don't come with, from within the black hole, they come from the vicinity of the black hole. They power their way through the star, form two oppositely directed beams like this, and if we happen to be along the line of sight toward one of those beams, then we see them. And the reason these energized particles can escape along the axis is because along the axis of rotation, there's a lower density of matter than there is along the equatorial plane. And so it's easier for the particles to escape that way. So they're going at relativistic speeds, nearly at the speed of light, pummel their way through, and if we're looking down one of the jets, then we see a very bright light. And the rest of the star more or less explodes in a normal way. So it looks kind of like this. And I don't have time for the demo. I'll show it to you um, on, on April 1st. But it turns out that we think that these massive stars that collapse in this way collapse to form a black hole, not a neutron star. Or two neutron stars might spiral together and eventually merge, forming two oppositely directed jets like this. And so if two neutron stars merge, they might form a black hole as well. Okay, with two absolutely direct jets. So either in the massive star case or in the merging neutron star case, you have the birth of a black hole. The one other thing that we think might happen is that a black hole might devour a neutron star, and that neutron star gets tidally disrupted, forms an accretion disk, and junk gets energized around the black hole and squirts out. So those are the things that we think are black are, are gamma ray bursts. We think that they are the birth cries of black holes or the growth of black holes. And I'll show you a demo about that on April 1st. Unfortunately for Hawking, they are not the explosions of miniature black holes. But that's the way it goes. Maybe someday we will find such mini explosions. Have a great spring break. I'll see you on April